Y'all, we're emptying our little cassette toilet. We've been dreading this moment because we've never done this before. We don't really know how to do it. I don't really know what to even touch. They didn't give us any gloves. Look at your little tote there. Right. Your little luggage. You think you could check this on an airplane? What would happen? Oh my <laughs> God. Well, in the States, you probably could because they'd be like, I don't know what the heck this thing is. Yeah, I have a feeling if you did that, they'd be really pissed. That's a good one. Get it? <laughs> that was pretty good. So look, it's basically just a little toilet. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, so we figured this thing comes out, the cap comes off, and then I guess you just dump that down the thing? I guess we won't show you guys that. <laughs> it's lime green and it smells really, really bad. You might think that number two is the worst in RV life. It's number one. It smells, number one is number one? Number one is number one. It smells worse than anything you could imagine. Well, I guess that's kind of a gross way to start a video, but this is what you gotta do when you're living in an RV. You gotta deal with all the crap before you can have fun. Well, good morning, adventurers from a surprisingly sunny day here in England. We are leaving the bath area and we are going to head out into the countryside to get some cream tea and some magical views and I think it's gonna be the best day of our lives. Yeah, we're gonna soak in as many England, England vibes as we can before we have to head out. If you guys have been following along, you know that we hired a little motorhome because we just really wanted to experience what it's like driving an RV in England. So far it's been okay, but man, it's been nerve wracking just driving this big old rig on these back roads. And it's not even that big of a rig by American standards. We're gonna try to stick to the main roads today, the bigger roads, the A roads. A roads and the motorways. And don't even think about B, C's or lanes. <laughs> Whatever you do, if you're RVing, <laughs> Don't get on a lane in England. You will regret it. But yes, we are driving on the right side of the vehicle, left side of the road. It's a manual and Allison is yet to drive this rig. So she's going to give it a little test drive. I hope everyone has insurance out there. We do have insurance, we, but still don't wreck it. We got the premium insurance just in case. Well, everything feels weird in here. The shifter is not like Ruby at all. It helps have the clutch in. You didn't have the clutch in? Listen. Right. Did you pull the parking brake off? I did. Okay. <laughs> Yay! I got it going. All right. Oops. <laughs> I got in a ditch already. All right. Don't hit anyone else's motorhomes. Don't hit any British people. Ooh, second gear. It's so smooth. Yeah. It's like riding a bike, right? Yeah, sure. A very big, deadly bike. All right. Can we say I drove it and I'm done? <laughs> yeah, I can drive from here if you want. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I don't love this. All right, we have switched. I'm in the driver's seat again. Feeling good-ish, feeling confident. England, here we come, y'all. <laughs> After I get through these freaking... Oh. Dude. <laughs> these speed bumps are insane, you guys. <laughs> Holy cow. All right, as soon as I get past these speed bumps, England, here we come. <laughs> Y'all, the glare on this road is mean because it's wet. The sun is perpetually like low in the sky. So it's just like glowing broadly on the whole road. You can't see Jack unless you have sunglasses on. Plus the lanes are freaking tiny still, even on the A road. <laughs> on the plus side, you look really good in my sunnies. Thanks doll. <laughs> so we're about halfway through our drive. We have about an hour, we're 30 minutes in. And y'all, the road's here. I know we keep talking about it, but it, they're so interesting. They get really wide and then they get really small and then they go down to one lane and then there's like stone houses all, all along the side or stone fences. Or just a bunch of cars parked. Or just a bunch like of cars completely parked. Completely blocking the lanes. <laughs> We've seen big tractors, big trucks, big trailers. Yeah, so the different classes of roads, you have the M road, which is the motorway. And then we went down to the A roads. That's what we're on right now. And those can get a little tight, but they're manageable. I mean, they drive huge trucks on these things somehow. Then you go off on like a B road. That's when it starts to get hairy. And anything down from that, you want to avoid if you're in a bigger rig like this. Yeah, that's when the lines disappear on the road and barely two small compact yeah. cars could get past each other. And sometimes they'll get down to literally just one lane. Yeah and uh, you have to drive up on the median and let the person pass. We don't want to get in any of those situations. So we actually have an app that routes us only on A roads. Well, y'all, looks like the bus has met its match. There's a big old semi in the road. Yeah, they're in a bit of a stalemate. I'm 
trying not to get too close. I don't know what's going on. I can't believe the trucker's backing up. I, if, yeah. If I were the buzz, I'd back up. I, don't I mean, know. he could probably get by me. But we got a nice audience of cows out there watching it. <laughs> wow, dude, you gotta have balls of steel to be a trucker in this country. We made it to the amazing little town of Cheddar near Cheddar Gorge. And holy cow, this is what English dreams are made of, y'all. The town is just absolutely beautiful. All these old stone buildings, all the roads are tiny and winding. And they're all built into like these black rock faces. It's very cool. Yes, into the gorge. Speaking <laughs> of, we're going to Cafe Gorge to get some cream tea, y'all. The best way to start the day. We literally cannot find cream tea in the States. You know, same. We haven't had it since we got here. So yeah. first order of business. Our food has arrived, and this is probably one of the things that we miss the most. Cream tea, a good pasty, some nice cappuccino. You're actually supposed to get tea with cream tea, but we're doing cream coffee, I guess. Tea's good later in the day, but for my first cup of caffeine, I prefer coffee. So this is the classic way to do it. It's just a plain, delicious scone with some jam, and then this beauty right here is clotted cream. As you can see, there's some like chunks in there and stuff which sounds weird but it's so good <laughs> that's the clotted part yeah is that why it's called clotted cream i have no idea <laughs> but it's delicious well you guys are supposed to be the expert you're supposed to help us well it's basically cream and then you add more calories but since we are in cheddar do you like me wielding a knife i went with their cheddar scone they've got hot butter in there fresh cheddar on the side and look, then a chutney look how good that cheese looks oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh it looks almost like slices of butter it's so like creamy looking the weirder ways you make cheese the better it comes out the weirder the cheddar the better yeah get some chutney on there let's put that much cheese on there that's a good amount i believe this is a cheddar scone as well cheddar on cheddar on cheddar well, it's perfect. It's super savory and buttery and creamy. And the scone is just, it like almost melts in your mouth. Everything's just so creamy. Scone cheers? Scone cheers. <laughs> Always with the sound effect. So we've got the scone over here, the clotted cream, the jam. And uh, the question is, jam or cream first? Oh, you know the answer to that. I do know the answer. What do you guys do? There's only one answer allowed. In it's cream, cream first, cream isn't it? Cream first. Is my, <laughs> what's remaining of mine? Definitely cream first. Yeah. I'm a cream first kind of guy. Oh, only when it comes to cream tea. You love to say that on YouTube. <laughs> You're making Noah blush. <laughs> By the way, the beans are with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They popped over to Cheddar to uh, see yeah, us yeah. off. So the scone is actually super fluffy. The cream, as you can see, it's very thick. It's basically butter, like sweet butter. You guys usually put like a ton on there, right? Uh, never too much, you all right. You have to use all of it between <laughs> yeah. the two, obviously. The whole thing's falling apart. Am I doing this right? Cream on, jam on, scone on. It's a delight. <laughs> it's a complete delight, you guys. Oh, and the cream is so cold, <laughs> it's delicious. It's an absolute flavor explosion. You get the fruitiness of the jam, the cream is so thick and delicious and cool, and then look how pillowy the scone is here. What do you got there, buddy? <laughs> It's a spoon. I don't want it. <laughs> you can have it. He just goes around begging for food with his little spoon. <laughs> Someone food me. You ate three days ago. Bye bye. We're saying bye to the beans for good this time. Yeah, we're sadly. Heartbreaking. Give him a yeah. goodbye. Bye. Well, until we come <laughs> out to the States. All right, there yeah. you go. Yeah. He's waving. Bye bye. Oh. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Also, look at their adorable little Fiat. We're so jealous. <laughs> I wish I was driving this right now and not the giant RV. Yeah, definitely for the British roads. Yeah. It's the only way to feel comfortable. I was telling them we almost got one of these instead of Ruby Suzuki to tow behind Clementine. I mean, I would like a Ruby Suzuki here. Though, yeah. Too. Oh, I wish I had that too. That might almost be about maybe smaller than this, actually. Than <laughs> See y'all. Bye bye. I told myself I'm not going to cry. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> So if you're not familiar with the town of Cheddar, they are of course famous for Cheddar Cheese. 
I guess this is like the place it originated. But it's also known for Cheddar Gorge. There's multiple different hikes you can take to get up to the tippy top of it. And this is one of them, Jacob's Ladder. <laughs> It is many, many steps. Even though we're halfway, the views are already getting amazing. And I feel like this makes you earn the cheddar that we're inevitably <laughs> gonna eat after this, right? We already ate the cheddar. Oh, so. we did, we already ate it, but we'll eat more. All right, onward. Well, we found the goats. <laughs> We saw their droppings all over the trail. We were wondering when we were gonna run into them. There's like 10 of them over here. And they are really majestic. Like this one has these huge, perfect, beautiful horns. And they all have these lovely little beards. <laughs> <laughs> they can really itch themselves in interesting ways. They use their horns, their hooves, everything. They're just living the life out here though, huh? Yeah, quite a magical little walk. It's very treacherous though. There are rocks everywhere. And now it's starting to rain, so it gets really muddy. And we're not exactly prepared for a hike, so. <laughs> no, that would, this was spur of the moment. Thus my skirt. I would Last time we came to Cheddar Gorge, I had inappropriate shoes. Now I have the right shoes, wrong outfit. One time, third time, maybe I'll get it right. <laughs> but I think what we have come to see is right around the corner. <laughs> You're so checking to make sure a goat no, isn't I thought trying he to. was maybe coming for me. <laughs> All right, goat you later. That wasn't really a joke, was no, it? <laughs> it was okay, not. Whatever. Goat out, goat out of here. Get out. That was worse. Okay. Boy, I'll tell you, England is moody today. It's sunny, then it's raining, then it's pouring. There's actually blue sky over there, and then like horrible rain over there, and then like beautiful pasture over there, it's crazy. But it's really cool, you can see the lake that's right in Cheddar. It's like this perfect circle off in the distance. But welcome to the top of Cheddar Gorge, y'all. There's Cheddar in them hills. That's why they call it this. But literally, there is Cheddar inside of here aging in caves yeah and we're about to go get a little look at it oh yeah i think that's better than gold imo <laughs> i don't know why anybody trades in gold and they don't just trade in delicious delicious cheddar well we told y'all there was cheese in them there hills <laughs> This is actually a Goff's cave, and that spot back there, they have some uh, cheddar that's just sitting back there aging, and uh, it looks gnarly, you guys. <laughs> but apparently, they are the only place that actually still makes cheddar in cheddar. There's only one place left, and that's their cheese. And you can go to their little shop in town and uh, get your own cheddar for yourself. They age it in here for up to a year. Hold so. on, my, this thing is getting really uh, fogged up. No. The temperature changes, man. You can eat cheese that's been in here for an entire year. It's pretty wild and funky. I imagine that flavor is uh, very robust. This cave has some really epic formations. We just got into this cavern and I think it's called Flowstone because it looks like it's flowing like water, like goo. Yeah, it looks like a big old candle, just yeah. all the wax rolling down the sides. It reminds me of like monster special effects or maybe like, you know, in Ghostbusters, the river of goo yeah. beneath the city. And of course you're not supposed to touch any of it because yeah. when you get your gun from your hand on it, you ruin it. Yeah. But some of these formations are really cool. Like look at this little pool that goes right to the edge and then it cuts through into this deep cavern in there with this all on top of it. This part of the cave looks particularly like alien goo or something, like movie special effects. It looks like an alien spaceship that's like infested. Well y'all, we are back on the road and uh, the route that we're taking, uh, which apparently avoids the tiny roads, takes us right down smack in the center of Bristol. <laughs> so that's where we are right now. The plus side of that is we get to get a real good look at the town and it is freaking sweet. Like it just kind of appeared over the hill and we're driving down the downtown area with all these old historic buildings and stuff. And of course a thousand people. A surprising amount of people. Yeah. I guess it is a Friday afternoon yeah, though. they are everywhere. Well, good morning y'all. Oops. <laughs> We've actually already been up. We just set that shot up. Obviously. Acting. But last night we actually managed to find a rest area that had tons of room for our RV. 
So we just pulled in a little spot, slept for the night, and it was actually really peaceful. This has by far been the best parking lot stay we've ever done. We're yeah. tucked away in a little corner. Nobody bothered us. I didn't even hear a car drive by. Here in the UK, or at least in England, it's not super common to be able to just pull over and sleep on the side of the road or in a rest area or anything like that. You basically have to be on private land where you have permission. And this is one of the few rest stops near London where apparently you can do that. We actually found this little app called Park for Night, and it shows the very limited places that you can stay, but there are places. Yeah. Like you can even stay at a pub. We were gonna do that, but they were off too far in the middle of nowhere, and I didn't want to drive down one lane roads. All right, but we are still on a bit of a jet lag situation, so we're waking up at 6:30, 7 a.m., and it's just completely dark outside and you have to wait until like 8 or 9 a.m. for the sun to be fully fully out it never yeah. really gets fully out in this country no but I think we are about to brave the rain because just on the other side of the hedges is a Starbucks yeah this is a sweet <laughs> little rest stop area they kind of have everything you need yeah let's get our asses in gear it is nasty out here you guys it's the exact same brightness as when we went to bed <laughs> sucks just a little bit more rainy. Oh God. But this spot's really cool because they have all these long spots for trucks or RVs. There's a bunch of spots way over there. Gas station if you need it. Starbucks, McDonald's. Starbucks when you need it. This is weird. It's like, I feel like I'm a morning person. We never wake up this early, but I'm just like six o'clock every day. Boom, I'm awake. Well y'all, sadly that's gonna conclude our little uh, RV road trip here in England. This trip was a little short-lived. We were actually only gonna be here for a couple more days, but we decided to cut it short because uh, you guys know what's been going on with my mom and she's kind of taken a turn for the worse. So we decided to just get back, get back home, um, especially for the holidays coming up and stuff. Not the greatest way to go into the holidays, but at least we'll be with family. We did intend to spend a little bit more time here, spend some more time with the beans, uh, see a little bit more of the Southern part of England, but uh, that's just not in the cards. So we're heading back. To kind of recap though, the whole RV life thing in England has been a little bit bittersweet. I mean, obviously you guys have seen, we can't stand driving on these tiny little roads. We're just not used to it. Although it was fun seeing all the different quirks about the way they do RVs here, like all the goofy stuff about this rig, the way that they do their campsites and stuff. And we actually really like the RV. Like we were just fantasizing about a way we could get an RV like this in the US without mm. being on the right yeah. side. <laughs> but for now we got to go turn this thing in. We're going to hop a flight. We're going to head back. So yeah. that's that. Goodbye adventures. We'll see you on the road.